Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Andy Vols, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Clear Street, a fintech company building better infrastructure for capital markets to bring better markets to all levels of financial participants. Andy, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Give me a little bit of your background and what brought you over to Clear Street. Sure. So my background is primarily in traditional finance and, and financial technology, 20 years servicing hedge funds, trading systems, front ends, algos, working with them on, on solutions. I actually met ClearStreet because I was exploring becoming a customer of ClearStreet. My previous firm was struggling with legacy technology, delayed data, issue with scaling, and I had reached out to our CEO at the time, Chris Pento, because I was trying to solve these problems and become a customer. And what I learned uh, in talking to Chris and, and learning about ClearStreet was that ClearStreet was actually trying to solve kind of for the industry as a whole, the exact problems I was having at my previous firm. Uh, I was also blown away, quite frankly, at how much ClearStreet had achieved in a short amount of time, the number of clusters they had, the markets that they were clearing, and uh, I made a decision to come over about a year ago, and I couldn't be happier. I'm, I'm thrilled to bring this to my customers. I think it's impactful to RIAs, hedge funds, brokers, any market participant could benefit from what ClearStreet's doing. I mean, that's really an interesting story. I mean, what better word of mouth do you need than you know converting from customer to actually becoming the COO of a company? Explain to me where ClearStreet's platform fits in the ecosystem. Sure. So I mentioned legacy technology. Mm -hmm. What's always amazed me in, in learning about the business is that most of this industry actually runs on technology that was built in the 80s and 90s. It's running on COBOL mainframes and batch processing. What ClearStreet set out to do and has done and is doing is rebuild that core layer in modern tech. We have a visionary CTO and co-founder, Sachin Kumar. He's built a phenomenal engineering organization. They have figured out how to actually build the rails, the connectivity to DTCC, NSCC, OCC in a modern framework. In AWS and Kafka and Kubernetes, it's scalable. We can deploy rapidly. What that means is obviously we can service more customers. We can grow faster but we could also give a much better customer experience to our customers and help them succeed and grow. So ClearStreet really is an infrastructure play with a prime brokerage business on top now, but we have a lot of ideas for other businesses in the future. You just closed the Series B, bringing you to unicorn status. Congrats on that. What, what's on the horizon for ClearStreet? What is that going to allow you to do? We're thrilled to have Prism Capital, a great VC, uh, lead that round that also included a, a good number of customers that really believe in the vision. Uh, the round was about growth. Uh, we are rapidly growing our engineering team, as I, as I mentioned. The goal of growing that team is more asset classes, more markets, more products. Our ultimate goal is to trade every country, every asset class, every product on a single unified source of truth, which is a lofty goal. So you need a lot of product and engineering people to achieve that. So it's all about growth. We're in growth mode. Where are the challenges and opportunities in fintech? So the way we look at it is the challenge is that, again, uh, finance is not the only place where you see a lot of that legacy technology. You could describe the same thing about plenty of other industries. So I think the challenge is a lot of fintechs try to build on that legacy layer. They try to make an abstraction on that layer and they try to just basically enhance functionality. We obviously think the opportunity is actually replacing the core infrastructure. If you think about what a Stripe did for payments or a Plaid did for banking, that's really what ClearStreet's doing for public equity markets. We have other markets we want to go into, but our goal is to be that infrastructure layer. And I think if you, in fintech, if you can identify other places where there's servers and basements, there are opportunities. And I want to wrap asking you about an organization that is, of course, very near and dear to me, Traders for a Cause. How did ClearStreet get involved with the group? So one of our leaders, Scott Herman, actually was a co-founder. So ClearStreet has been involved with Traders for a Cause since very early on. Uh, the professional trading community is, is near and dear to our heart. It's one of our main customer bases. We wanted to find a way to give back to it. We want to find a way wherever we can to give back as an organization. And we think Traders for a Cause does a great job. It's a very efficient charity. And thank you so much also for, for your support of the organization. We are actually increasing our support and we look forward to continuing to do so in the future. You know, it's so interesting with the trading community. We're a very competitive bunch here. But when it comes back to Wall Street, LaSalle Street, any you know the major streets um, across the globe, always involved with charity and giving back to their communities. And I think this is just such a great way to highlight that. We agree. All right, Andy, appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.